Good day, everybody, and welcome to the House of Mario, the South Australian Nintendo podcast that is backed by a 120 power star rating. I'm your host, Drew Agnew, and the doors to episode 221 are open. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about Nintendo's financial results. Very, very interesting, as well as uh, some Mario Strikers and uh, whatever else comes to mind, because this is a different episode. It's a little bit different. I've got a very special guest, and it's not Bryce. You know, not that Bryce isn't special, but this one is especially special to me. It's my wife, Chantel. How you going, Chantel? Good, thank you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's a little bit nervous. She has podcasted with me before, but... Um, Nintendo is very, very much out of her comfort zone. She's not much of a gamer, but uh, with Bryce stepping down, she uh, said, yeah, I'll give it a go, I'll give it a bash. And I thought it would be an interesting perspective as well, having someone on our show who's like, yeah, well, you know, not that into gaming at all, really. <laughs> I put up with uh, Drew's bullshit, and now that she's in the house of Mario, she'll, she'll know how much of a nerd I truly am <laughs> if she doesn't already. Yeah, I think I have a pretty good idea, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll be talking about a, a few things. And, you know, you don't have to have, you know, big uh, in-depth impressions on every single thing. That's all right. Yeah, there'll be none of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess just off off the bat, Chantel, how you going? You feeling a bit nervous? Shaky? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to be able to contribute, really, um, <laughs> too much. But, uh, yeah, no. Nah. This is a bit out of my comfort zone in general, so. No, it's all good. Well, you, usually, I don't know, we've missed a lot of episodes and um, you, usually I try and do like a solo episode or something like that, but I just feel felt like it's a little bit weird. I don't know. I, try, I tried to do as many, uh, I guess, podcasts where I'm actually talking to someone. I don't know how much people actually enjoy the solo episodes, um, but people do say they enjoy them a little bit, but I don't know. But I thought I'd just bring you on anyway. But um, we've just put our son to bed, so Chantel might have to duck off here and there if he does wake up. Uh, what, what do you what do you reckon the percentage that he will wake up is? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, he, he's down pretty well, mm. so maybe low, but I just hope we can hear him. Yeah, no, we'll be able to hear him. Um, I usually do when I'm doing this. I can hear him for the headphones. I'm like, oh, God, poor Chantel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the one settling him every night. <laughs> mm, mm. Not every night, I do it sometimes. Or every podcast night. Yeah, the podcast nights, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of anxiety when I'm in here, just like, oh, God, I know what's going on out there. <laughs> yeah, so, Chantel, let's start off the show with a uh, sort of a segment called Guru Geek Out. It's a tribute to my late friend, Bobby Pauls, a Nintendo guru. Just talking about stuff we enjoyed over the week, um, stuff we're, we're thankful for, all that type of stuff. And uh, we recently went on a trip to Adelaide to... I guess, uh, show off Lucas to our friends and family up there. Yeah, Lucas's first big trip and uh, mm-hmm. first time meeting, you know, my grandma and, um, you know, a lot of our friends and family that, that live up there because I'm from Adelaide. So, yeah, no, it was it was pretty nice to be able to take him up and see everyone and it was very, very jam-packed full of visitors. So I don't think we could have squeezed anyone else in if we tried. Yeah, we had like an hour free. We're like, oh, God. <laughs> you just wanted to go to bed. Um, and I think Lucas decided that it was time just to be awake and <laughs> want, <laughs> wanting food and all that. But no, yeah. it, was, it was good to see everybody and like introduce him to like a few of my mates and all that. I think it was good. Yeah. Yeah. And your, uh, your nan absolutely loved him. Yeah. As she should have. It would have been a bit, sh- bit of a shame if she didn't. Yeah. No, first great grandchild. So she was absolutely smitten. <laughs> mm. Yeah. No, absolutely. And w- w- like when, when your uh, cousins came over, I got to have one of those cool uncle moments <laughs> where um, I guess uh, one of the kids you know, got out his switch. I'm like, hey, Harrison, what's your, what's your favorite game? And I- I've done that a few times with, uh, you know, people's kids, whatever. And they go, oh, Fortnite, Rocket League. I'm like, yeah. Fair enough. But um, he responded with uh, something I did not expect. He said, Rayman Legends. I'm like, oh, my God, that's like one of my favorite games. So <laughs> so we got him to bring the Switch over and we ended up playing the like the soccer mini game. And it's, it's pretty basic. You just It's like on a 2D plane. You're kicking the soccer ball into each other's goal. But so it's a lot of fun. We had a lot of, uh, lot of fun doing that. He just um, sat in the goal and just blocked and kicked the ball straight back into my goal. I'm like, oh, well. 
<laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind losing. I'll make them feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a tactic that works. Yeah. But um, one of them, the the little girl, she was not happy when she was losing at Murray Kart because, um, yeah, that, that, that was another sort of a moment where it's like they left Murray Kart at home and Drew, he's got everything downloaded on his Switch. And um, when um, I was going through all the games, like, oh, my God, how many games do you have? I'm like, oh, I've got a, got a couple there, champ. <laughs> I got a yeah, I got a lot saved on the on the switch itself. So um, yeah, but it ended up in in tears because she came twelfth. I'm like, mm, can't do much about that. I put um afterwards, I put all the smart controls on. So there's like controls where you can't fall off the edge and the cart automatically accelerates and you know just all the little helpful things. So you just pretty much have to steer. Yeah, all the things that I need as well. Mm. Well, next time we play Mario Kart, <laughs> you, you can you can put them on. Sweet. Yeah. No, because um, it, it's interesting because I remember ages ago when we were at your parents' place and we go through some of your old stuff, and we found out that you had like a DS. <laughs> I remember that absolutely blew my mind. I'm like, because just, just for context, guys, you know, Chantel, she like she doesn't have interest in games. It you know, doesn't play games. Um, she tolerates them well enough for me because, you know, I guess she would have to. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have got to this point in our relationship if, um, if she just said no games. But um, yeah, w- when I found out she had DS, I was just absolutely just mind just just mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got to get around the Picto chat. Yeah, and I inher- inherited a lot of your DS games. Um, I think there was Nintendogs and stuff in there. Brain training. Yeah, brain training. Like, what made you get a DS? Actually, like, was it just because like it was popular and you got one for Christmas? Was that pretty much it, or were you like, oh, I want one of them? What happened? Uh, so I, just, I really don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't remember specifically asking for one, but I think it was like uh, maybe my sister and I were both going to get one to help us with like long distance travel and stuff like that. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Because yeah, you do a lot of traveling for like your sport and stuff. Yeah. You yep. and your sister, you for taekwondo. Yeah. yeah. Basketball. We both did basketball and you know, from Adelaide, family in Adelaide, there were lots of Adelaide trips. So, mm. yeah, I think that was really going to help us, you know, stay occupied on long travels. And um, also, like, my best friend had one. So, yeah, we got on the Picto chat every time we had a sleepover <laughs> and drew little um, <laughs> bad penises. and Bad penises. So, yeah, well. None of you drew, like, a really just in-depth graphic-looking penis. To send to one another. It's like, whoa, that's way too veiny. Calm that down. Not at twelve. Not at twelve. No. But thirteen. That's when you got the. <laughs> that's when you got the skills. Going to just draw some nice penises. No, we did that too. It's just like you know, a quick, a quick um, ball sack, a quick little phallus on top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there wasn't. There wasn't too much uh, put into it. Maybe a little bit of uh, pee coming at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> pee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh god <laughs> you're like p oh. yes it was p chantel it wasn't anything else okay, okay we weren't we weren't drawing anything that graphic i think my other favorite thing to do was to draw the whole screen black yeah that was a thing too but you <laughs> use the eraser just to like draw, draw a dick <laughs> to draw a dick there you go so so you draw on black dicks yeah that's what <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's Chantel's gaming adventure, I guess. Your family had a Wii. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, the Nintendo Wii with the sports and mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was Mum's idea. We also had Playstations and and stuff like that because you know, my dad's a bit into some games and my brother was too. So we played Crazy Taxi on PlayStation. But this isn't a PlayStation podcast, is it, Drew? It's a it's a whatever you want to talk about, Chantel. <laughs> Crazy Taxi was a lot of fun. I um I didn't play much of Crazy Taxi to be honest. I played a lot of um the knockoff Simpson version, which was called Simpsons Road Rage on, oh, Ga- yeah. on Game Boy Advance. It's pretty much the same thing, just worse, but the Simpsons. <laughs> that would have been yeah, kind of cool, but mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. No, PlayStation Two was was massive, so I guess everyone had one. Same with Wii and DS. You just I think they just end up in people's houses and people are like, oh, well, I guess uh, I guess this is a, a thing I'm going to play a couple of games on at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, or DVDs. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, it's a, it's a DVD player. Because the thing with the PlayStation 2 is that, like, 
I, I never I never actually had a PlayStation 2 when it was relevant, but it was the same price as a DVD player. So it was kind of like a no-brainer to get the DVD player and the console in one. Yeah, um, fair enough. Yeah, and that's why it became the, the best-selling console ever just because it just did so much compared to the other two. They didn't play DVDs. Mm. So it was a... It's a bit of a bit of a fuck up on Nintendo and Xbox's <laughs> behalf. Yeah, I think yeah, I was probably a bit young to really understand the concept of money mm. at that age. Um, in terms of you know PlayStation and DVD players and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely mm. watched a lot of DVDs on the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your your other gaming adventure. Just uh yeah no no just heaps of DVDs. You use, <laughs> you use the DualShock to um select play with the X button. Yeah. And that's what you do on Netflix now. You use a lot of the PlayStation 5, don't you, for Netflix? Oh, yes. I play the PlayStation 5 more than you do. <laughs> you actually do. <laughs> it's just our Netflix machine. And it's funny because like upgrading from the PlayStation 4 Pro, um, obviously I, I'm excited for like the DualSense controller and the games that come with it and uh, just just the, the better performance in the games. But a lot of it was just turning it on to get the Netflix and going back to the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is set up for my, I guess, VR at the moment. Oh, God, it's slow. God. You can watch like a whole episode of something by the time <laughs> that yeah. thing turns on now. Yeah. I remember asking you like, why do we need another one? This one's fine. And you're like, because you can watch Netflix faster. Mm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> can you tell the difference? No. I mean, we've had it for, oh, I guess, coming up a couple of years. Has it been that long? Oh, my God, it has to. Yeah, you wouldn't even remember the PS4 no, at this point now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, towards the end of the show, I want to have, a, uh, I guess, a discussion with you about, you know, I think a lot of people can relate who listen to a lot of gaming podcasts or might be in this position where they have a partner, not really into games, but they'd like to introduce them into something they really like but don't really know how to and maybe games that aren't action-focused or something like that. But, um, you know, with you over the over the sort of, I guess, multiple years we've been together. I haven't found that How game. How many years? Uh, is it seven? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I, didn't, I don't have to tell um, the audience everything. No. Little no, sticky just, beaks? God. I was just checking. Just checking. What if I got it wrong? Would you leave? Yeah. I mean, leave the room, not leave me. Yeah. Oh, you would leave me? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? Mm. You'll be you'll be you'll be upset. You'll come back. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think um that's what we're, we're thankful for. Just a, a good weekend with family. It was nice to finally introduce Lucas, um and all of that. Got to be the cool uncle. Play some Rayman Legends again, which I really I really love that game. It's such a shame that Ubisoft just <sighs> just doesn't make them anymore. They just uh they just make some shit now. Anyway. That's a tangent for another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into the news. Um, I'm going to try and, uh, I guess, throw it to Chantel in some kind of way she can she can put an opinion out there of it. But if I can't do that, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll move on. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a very different episode. But uh, I think it's, it's uh, good fun. It's better than talking to myself anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> let's move into the news. Alrighty, so hey, have have you heard that jingle before? I guess you haven't. You haven't been on the show. No, and I, to be honest, I've never even listened to your House of Mario podcast either. I usually listen to the others, but not all oh, the other the gaming ni- ones. <laughs> the other Nintendo podcasts. No, no, no. The other yeah, ones yeah. that you do. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine just like yeah, I listen to everyone else, but you suck. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, I guess the, the first story for today is that uh, Nintendo financial results are out. This is going to be extremely dry and boring for Chantel. And maybe for you too, but for me, I, I actually really enjoy the numbers updates just for sales and how things are going. This is That is, um, I guess, how nerdy I am. She's raising her eyebrow. Um, but we'll get through this relatively quick. We don't have to update everyone on too much here, but Nintendo Switch has now sold one point, oh, sorry, 107.65 million units. It's uh, Nintendo's best-selling console ever with five years on the market. And um, we'll touch on it a bit later, but analysts are actually predicting that it will beat the PlayStation 2 and become the best-selling console ever, which um, just for context, Chantel, their last system, the Wii U, sold 13... 
or a bit over 13 million. Oh, yeah. So this is like the comeback of all comebacks. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Even like after Wii, they sold about 100 million Wiis. But um, yeah, the Switch is on its uh, big trajectory. So yeah. it's a big number, isn't it, Chantel? Isn't it like the first portable console in a while or? Yeah, oh, sort of. So um, a lot of companies don't make handhelds anymore because they can't really compete with mobile phones all that well. Just because everyone has a phone and no one's, a lot of people aren't going to be like, all right, I'm going to spend $300, $400 on just a portable system. Mm, Whereas like, you know, for yourself, you wouldn't go and buy a Switch, but you would download the odd game and that would would be good enough for you on your phone if you wanted something like that. Um, Not that you play too many games on your phone anyway. No, I think uh, Candy Crush was probably my limit. Yeah, as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Never spent any money though. No, no, nah. no. Nah. Nah, I'm a tight ass. I don't. I won't spend money. Yeah, on that's the phone. good. Yeah, no. I just games like that really annoy me. Just how they just want money from you a lot, just again and again and again, and you don't really get anything for it. Mm. Mm. But yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, huge number. Congratulations, Nintendo. It's good that. Like it's it's a system that I really enjoy, so it's nice that they're actually getting rewarded for it. And going forward, it will be sort of in that handheld sort of realm because this is like the Switch is one of the first handhelds that you can dock and play on a TV. And Nintendo do consider it a a console rather than a handheld. Mm. Um, but I think Nintendo they're able to back to your first question. Sorry, um, Nintendo are able to hold on to this market because they have extremely, I guess, strong like games and franchises like uh, PlayStation. They had two handheld devices They had the PSP, which um, competed with Nintendo DS and that went really well for them, but it only sold about half of what the DS sold, Yeah, but it still sold 80 million for like the, their first outing with a handheld was really, really impressive to be honest. But then the PlayStation Vita, it sold about oh, 17 million. Like still, still not too bad, but it was nowhere near the PSP and, they just went, oh, fuck it, we give up. The PS4 is dominating the, the console race at the time, so they didn't really need to. But now Nintendo's just sort of left by himself. They've got no one to compete with. Um, there's another device called the Steam Deck, which is basically a computer in the form of a Switch. Right. And that's uh, able to produce, like, you know, better graphics and all of that. But it's a very different device, a lot more expensive. You know, you can't do multiplayer just by sitting it down and, it's not really mm. for kids, you know. It's more not of like quite as versatile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just something like like something I would really enjoy, but um, yeah, it's not for kids and like a mass market type of thing. Yeah. Um, but let's t- let's touch on some of the games. So Nintendo game games are selling very well still. Ring Fit Adventure is uh, at number ten, sold fourteen point oh nine million units, which is <laughs> which is nuts. So the very bottom game on the top ten is fourteen million which uh, is insane, especially for a title like that. Then we've got Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu at 14.43 million. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl at 14.56. Um, now, I, w- I will just say this. Uh, I really hope that Pokemon Legends Arceus does outs- <laughs> outsell these games because um, these are very, you know, they're not great. I don't think they deserve that those sales, but they're Pokemon nevertheless. We've got Super Mario Party at 17.78. Super Mario Odyssey at 23.50 million. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Sh- uh, Shield at 24.27. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 26.55 million. Super Smash Brothers at 28.17 million. And Animal Crossing New Horizons, which only came out a couple of years ago, at 38.64 million. And number one, as always, can you guess what it is, Chantel? Selling a Nintendo game? Pokemon? Uh, no, it's a uh, Mario Kart. Oh, right. <laughs> Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at uh, 45.33 million u- units, which is, uh, which is a lot of games. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mario Kart 8, it came out on the Wii U in uh, 2014, and they just repackaged it a bit, put a bit more content in it, and released it on Switch in 2017, and it's just. Continued to sell and sell. You can only imagine how much uh, how much money that uh, generated just with not that much effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, initially, but yeah, that's pretty much um, a lot of it. 
there's a, a bit of news going around about how Nintendo are going to go on to their next console. The sort of there's a mistranslation um, about that, which was um, a little bit frustrating to hear. Basically saying that Nintendo were going to be worried about their next transition, but when it was actually officially translated, it was very much just a they're thinking about how they can do a smooth transition. There wasn't anything said about being worried about it or whatever. But I might go into I guess uh, that. Um, topic in an encore later this week just about how they i think they can transition to their next console successfully because i think um i think i think what they're saying how they think they're going to do it is a uh, probably not the not the best way but i don't know i'm not a businessman but i, I play their shit <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah apart from that we got some new sales uh data for kirby so in two weeks it sold uh, 2.1 million which is pretty good for kirby I think this is Kirby's best outing as well. Um, that, that that was another game with um, Harrison. He's like, "Oh, you've got Kirby," and he wanted to try Kirby. Oh yeah. See see if he could spend his um you know hard earned pocket money on it. So like eighty bucks for a kid, year two. Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so much for me. I remember buying um Super Mario World. It was like eighty or ninety bucks on Game Boy Advance, and that was I don't know life savings. Because I remember just like, oh, that is so much money, but I want that goddamn Mario game. And I'm happy I bought it. It was worth. It was actually worth the money, but still a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot, a lot of money for a kid. Do you have any like toys or things when you were like a young kid where you, where you spent a lot of money on it and you like remember it, have fond memories? We just bought nothing. Um, we- <laughs> I don't know. I think growing up, I was a lot more involved in sport than gaming. Oh, yeah, so, I, I'm, I'm not even saying gaming, but I don't know. It could be like a a very cool basketball or... Nah, no, nah, I wasn't into like aesthetics or anything like that to mm. do with the sport. So it wasn't like a collection of basketballs or shoes or yep. anything like that. I was just, you know, I, I'm going to basketball and I'm going to bounce it or, you know, <laughs> um, taekwondo. Like, there's not really a lot of things you can spend money on in taekwondo unless you're competing, which I did, and therefore you putting money into experiences and not things. So, yeah, I wouldn't say that I have the same sort of Mm. memory of anything in particular that I spent a lot of money on. It's interesting that you say you you spent money on experiences, not things. Like kind of thinking back to it, like spending money on games is is kind of an experience, if you know what I mean. Like I have fun memories of like going through the game and participating in, I guess, all the events that take place in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I, I remember getting up early from school and – well, before school, sorry – and like beating a boss in Zelda, like Twilight Princess. And that game, that's, that was another similar thing. I remember looking at the price tag when I just got my Wii, like 100 bucks. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, on one game. Like, and, and I was probably used to DS games. I think they were about 60 bucks. So a $100 game, like, holy shit. But thinking back to it, it was like – it was worth it. Like, And I remember like where I was in my life when I was doing – particular parts of of the game and like going to Bryce's place and there was a particular dungeon where I was up all night and I was just sat next to sat next to Bryce on his bed and he was asleep <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like it was a really scary dungeon I was just like terrified going through it like oh my god what's gonna what's gonna jump out at me and pausing it going out for a pee coming back Bryce is still asleep <laughs> <laughs> and uh just beating the last boss finally early in the morning and he's he's um wipes his eyes like oh you still playing i'm like yeah it's like yeah no like there's there's lots of sort of experiences that come with that too Phil. yeah mm. I, I i get it yeah yeah i'm not saying you don't get it <laughs> <laughs> and um so we also got pokemon legends Arceus updates and it sold over uh it was 11.4 million in 10 weeks so cool it's a pokemon game i hope it sells more than brilliant diamond shining pearl um I don't really want another situation of those games. They weren't very good, Chantel. That's um, that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We also... I'm probably pulling this from Nintendo News and um, uh, analytics firm believe the Switch 2 is coming 2024 and confident original will overtake the PlayStation 2. And the article reads, video game an- uh, analytic firm Empire Analysts believes that Nintendo will be ready to release its next generation follow-up to the ultra-successful Nintendo Switch in 2024. 
Uh, Piers Harding Rolls, speaking uh, for the analytics, also said by the end of the hybrid console's lifetime, the Nintendo Switch family of systems will have dethroned Sony's PlayStation 2 console, which is the best-selling console of all time. Um, so that pretty much covered what the quote was. But I don't know, just from like an outsider's perspective growing up and you know, PlayStation 2's doing its thing, you've probably seen it at a lot of friends' places. Do you, do you feel like, I know you're an adult now and you're around me who's a lot more focused on Nintendo and all that, but do you, do you see the Switch in, a I guess, a similar mainstream sort of way that the PlayStation 2 was? Because it's hard for me to sort of step back and see it because I've always been a Nintendo fan and I'm a big PlayStation fan as well. So I'm not that sure. But just from, I guess, your point of view, what what, what do you think? Um, I think, you know, circling back to what you said before in terms of the, the PlayStation 2 being a household item rather than the Nintendo Switch being a personal item. So I think, mm. um, you know, you, you might see the odd person on the bus, you know, playing a Switch or something like that, but, you know, then it's still sort of a, like a, a person gaming instead of, you know, a bit more mainstream and open to people who aren't, mm. you know, gaming per se. Like, yeah, I mm. don't know. Yes, but not quite to the same extent. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree because it was like the PlayStation 2 sales is incredibly impressive and it is because of that included DVD support and, you know, a lot of people bought them. Like, for example, when I went to Tasmania in our RV, there was a, a PlayStation 2 as a DVD player because it's probably the only DVD player that could actually fit in that little slot Yeah. because the PlayStation Slim was like so small and like a normal DVD player wouldn't have a chance of fitting in that little that little nook in there. So you can only imagine like lots of places just bought them for that, like not even for video games whatsoever. Probably didn't even come with a mem- memory card or anything. But if you buy a Switch, it doesn't do anything. Like you, you can you can watch YouTube and stuff on it, but it, it is just made for gaming. It doesn't do a whole lot else apart from that. So if, if Switch even reaches anywhere near PlayStation 2, I think that's just incredibly impressive because it is people are buying it for primarily Nintendo games. Which is, mm-hmm. which is what you can see in their sales because they are still selling so much. But also gaming has grown so much since the PlayStation 2. Gaming was pretty small back then um, just with you know, the type of people that played. And now people like me uh, at the age where you know, spending a, <laughs> we're adults, spend money and kids coming up are all being, you know, being gamers as well. So I don't know. I think uh, gaming is in a lot better place. So that might actually be put Nintendo in a better place to keep it going. Is it though? Like, because I would put, you know, your arcade games under gaming as well and they're mm-hmm. going back, you know, decades and stuff like that. So I think, you know, it might not become, not might not be becoming more popular per se, but just different. Yeah, oh, it's definitely different, yeah. yeah. I think it is bigger though. Like, you, you just, just like, you know, titles like, you know, think, think back to PlayStation 2 and Xbox and GameCube. Um, Call of Duty wasn't the behemoth it was and Fortnite and a lot of these massive money makers. I think you can look at it in different ways. I guess like, I guess money made, like generated for these these companies, they're definitely making a lot more money now, whether that's because gaming's bigger or because of microtransactions or ease of use through downloads or stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> All right, what have we got next? Oh, so. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> just thought, <laughs> don't know what I'm doing there. So um, this is basically about uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess coming to Switch. And uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon if this is to believe. So uh, the the, uh, the dev team, uh, what's, what's the name? Ten Talus. Ten Talus. Um, they haven't been spoken to about bringing Twilight Princess to Switch. And this article is from My Nintendo News and it reads, Tentalis is a development studio which brought over the beloved Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess to the Wii U console and the Legend of Zelda Skull Sword HD to the Switch family of systems. Uh, the Twilight Princess HD port was a great success for fans and many have been clamoring for Nintendo to bring the game over to newer, uh, the, the newer Nintendo's, uh, Nintendo Switch system. However, Tintelis CEO Tom uh, Cargo recently appeared on the Fragment Silicon podcast 
uh, and said that his company hasn't been approached by Nintendo to bring the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD port to the Nintendo Switch. This doesn't mean it's not happening, but it is not a great sign either. Um, so I, I, don't know, I thought I'd just bring this up if, in case people are sort of expecting this game soon. Um, it was interesting when this uh, game sort of came to Wii U because it was sort of ported over by an Australian team, which was kind of cool just as a fellow Australian. So oh, cool. This big game that I really enjoyed sort of got worked on by a, a sort of more local team. But I don't know if it necessarily means that this game won't become the Switch anytime soon. It could be ported by anyone else. And just with the amount of legwork that needed to happen to bring Twilight Princess to Wii U with like the gamepad, all that type of stuff. And even with Skyward Sword, just everything that needed to be done to bring that game from Wii to Switch. Um, I don't know if that much work needs to be done to it again um, to bring it, bring Twilight Princess to Switch. So um, could be done by a number of different teams. So I wouldn't necessarily think that, uh, yeah, these words necessarily mean we're not getting it, but who knows? I don't think we're getting it this year or probably next year anyway, just from their, uh, their lineup anyway. Yeah. I don't think you have much to say on that. No. <laughs> um, there's been a, a brand new trailer for Mario Strikers Battle League. And this is a game I'm really looking forward to, Chantel. It's basically a Mario soccer game. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I can't wait for it. I just brought it up because the trailer looks looks great. It looks a little bit slow compared to the pre- previous games in the series, which has me a little bit concerned. Um, I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned about this game because the last few sports games with Mario have been a little bit lackluster. haven't really... I haven't really had that much legs. And this were, this one is a favorite game of mine from the Wii. So I really hope that uh, that it turns out good. But um, the trailer looks good. There's, there's mechanics where you can tackle one another to like basically push your team into um, the other team to get like a super tackle pretty much. You can do like these big sort of – these big uh, impressive sort of shots on goal. And um, it looks like a lot of fun. There's going to be a, a club feature where you can have 20 members – so the House of Mario will have a, a club. So get in quick. Be one of the 20. Let's, ri- <laughs> let's rise to the top of the league. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And um, there was a, 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 what's it called? A, an Indie World Showcase. I'm not going to go into all the games. I might do that on a, a separate episode. But uh, I thought this Indie World Showcase was really cool. Showing off 20 indie games coming to Nintendo Switch. Um, there wasn't that big sort of impressive indie game. I was ho- sort of hoping for Hol- Hollow Knight uh, Silk Song and uh, maybe Sports Story, a couple of these titles that we've seen before. But uh, I was really happy to see Soundfall appear there, and that was a, a sort of a release on the same day. I've had a bit of time to play it. I'm enjoying it so far. I'll have a bit more in-depth impressions a little bit later. But, yeah, I, I'm really sort of enjoying these indie showcases. I think there's a, a bunch of stuff to enjoy there. So if you did miss it, go and check it out online. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit later so we don't bore Chantel too much. But, um, yeah, I really like sort of independent games made by like, smaller teams that aren't just like, you know, your big big publishers like you know Activision making Call of Duty and all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Get a few more sort of different ideas and stuff in there. Yeah, and I guess you know supporting the little guy as well. You know, someone a bit more. You know, could could be anybody who's who's made that game. Could be you know a, a Drew Agnew who has, <laughs> who has made this indie game, and you know people are like, oh, cool. You know, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to um learn how to make games. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Just as a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can get like free software to like, you know, tinker around with stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Got to be pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much the news. It wasn't like a whole lot of news this week. Uh, so this part of the show, Shanta, what we do is called Red Coin Releases. And then we just talk about th- three games that came out this week on the eShop. Just have a look around. Well, well we don't have to because... <laughs> You're like, I don't know what came out. But uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll get into our sort of discussion about how to you know, get your partner into games. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see from your perspective. Because we've, we've had conversations in the past where I'm like, hmm, I yeah, didn't think of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, let's get into it. All right, so the first game on my list here is Soundfall. I really do enjoy this game. I think it's a, a lot of fun. Played about two hours of it. You can get it for about 38 bucks on the eShop. It's on sale. And uh, the description here reads, Feel the beat. Use the beat. Defeat the beat. Jesus. Soundfall is a fast-paced, music-based dungeon crawler that combines looter-shooter action with rhythm-based gameplay to create the world of music unlike any other. Defend Symphonia, you are the guardian of Harmony, a musical genius transported by the world of Symphonia by the composers to battle the forces of Discord. <laughs> Venture out solo or with four players to fight your way through the corrupted timberlands of Symphonia, eradicating the Discordians and restoring Harmony to the environment. Now, when you put it that way, I don't know, I assume that was just gobbledygook. That was almost gobbledygook to me too. Yeah. And uh, like going through the story, I don't really care too much about the story. I don't care about the ki killing the Discordians or whatever. It's very much about the gameplay um, being like a dungeon crawler. But you're listening to like this this music in the background and everything you do from shooting your gun to doing dashes, you've got to do with the beat. So like the beats per minute. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty fun. I played it at PAX a couple of years ago and I actually did, did an interview with the devs and they're really friendly. Like uh, the guy I was talking to, he was um, from uh, Gearbox Software. Well, he was he was an ex Gearbox Software um, employee, and we we're talking for ages. We we're just talking about a whole bunch of stuff just after we you know, pressed stop on the on the interview. It's really nice people. So I guess after that, I was you know, a little bit biased. Just you know, these guys are cool. I'll make sure I support their game, and it finally came out all this time later. So yeah. <laughs> worth the wait, hopefully. Yeah, I think it was. Next up is a game I don't know much about. It's an Opus Echo of Star Song Full Bloom Edition. All right. It's 33 bucks and 75 cents on the eShop. It's 10% off. Imagine 80, 80 Days by Way of June and Makoto uh, Shinika film, Rock Paper Shotgun. All right. So that's a quote from Rock Paper Shotgun. If, if, if Japanese filmmaker Makoto, your name Shinkei, ever made a video game, I don't think Star Song would be far off of it. Okay. Let's get to the, about this game. Let's go down here. Uh, Opus Echo of Star Song Full Bloom Edition is the definitive edition to the visual novel style adventure game. Now with all new voice acting, dive in and enjoy this intergalactic journey that transcends time through love. That sounds nice. There you go. It's a visual novel. Very nice art style. You think you can hear Lucas? Is he crying? No, I was just checking. Just checking? Okay. Hopefully we're not too loud for the boy. I try to say... It, I try to stay a, a little bit quiet. Am I quiet enough? Oh, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh. The intro can occasionally get a bit loud. Mm, yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So usually when I'm recording with Bryce, how loud are we? Oh, pretty loud pretty loud yeah yeah no, it's no good is it oh i guess you know you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do and two boys just uh talking shit yeah. and uh last but not least is uh eden uh chronicles rising and strengthen your bonds eden chronicle rising combines a thrilling adventure through ancient ruins with the tale of one town's rise from the ashes uh, drawn, uh, drawn by lenses and other treasures in nearby <laughs> rune burrows, our heroes learn that the town is struggling to rebuild after an earthquake and decide to help. Along the way, they resolve disputes between eager adventurers and wary locals who don't think the burrows should be disturbed, and they'll learn more about each other's reasoning for seeking treasures depending on their bonds in the process. And I think this game has a really nice art style. It looks looks nice. Um, it's basically, a, a, I guess, a prelogue to a, another JRPG that comes out uh, next year sometime. And I'm intrigued to play it. It's only 22, uh, 22 bucks. It's free on Game Pass, so that's where I'm going to play it. But, um, yeah, really nice looking game. All right. So th this is the part of the show, Chantel, where we go to Reggie's Rec Room. You know Reggie Fees, mate? No. Oh, well, here we go. <laughs> he's, a, he's a nice man. Is it the whole my body is Reggie yeah. meme person? Yeah. Yep, okay. yep, no, it's him. 
that's, that's it. I, I just love how that sort of just synced into your brain via me. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the body? Oh, it just made me cringe so much. It's it's definitely just see it into my brain. Do you know w- where it comes from? Um, one year at E3, he basic he was um showing off the the Wii Fit board, which mm-hmm. which is your, if you remember that's like a board you step on and you can play Wii Fit games. Yeah, my mum bought one. She bought one. Did she use it much? No. No. Well, he he was showing off that, and uh, he basically just stepped on it and said, "My body is ready." Right. Yeah. And uh, in his book, he actually had like a, a pretty, <laughs> he actually had like a fair bit um, about where that come from because like the meme becomes so big and he didn't even mean it to be a thing. But he basically, uh, <laughs> when they practiced doing these presentations, um, he got a bit of a laugh out, out of uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, who was the creator of Mario and Zelda yep. and a lot of other franchises at Nintendo. And that was the one thing he said that actually made him smirk a bit. So he said, all right, I'll keep that. <laughs> <laughs> and it became one of the, I guess, the biggest gaming memes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's get into Reggie's rec room and uh, see how he's going. We haven't seen Reggie in a little bit, so it'd be nice to nice to call in, see what he's up to. Hi, Nintendo fans. Reggie here. Thank you for your never-ending support, for giving me a mushroom kingdom full of incredible memories that I will never forget, ever. So, did you expect we actually had Reggie in the house? Did you know that, or? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just—I don't know. He's—we he, just keep him in this room. He pops us a bottle of champagne each episode, but he doesn't get to leave much. He gets a bit cranky, and then after he does that little intro, he's like, "Look, I'm not getting paid for the, this," and he just shuts up. We can't get him to talk again. Fair enough. Mm, yeah. So I've done enough talking this episode, Chantel. Let's uh, let's have a conversation about how to get. I guess, uh, you know, people who aren't in the games, how to sort of ease them in and what, um, we can start a journey with you as well, I reckon. See, see what games we can get you to maybe enjoy a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So like in, in the past, we've tried a couple of things. We've tried Mario Kart, mm-hmm. Smash Brothers and, you know, stuff like that, which is, you know, they're, they're fun games, easy to pick up to some extent. Maybe not when you're playing against like me and Bryce. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember the first time I played Smash Bros um, was actually at a party that you were having with a bunch of mates and stuff. And I was I was sort of a tag along to one of your mates' younger sisters. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and it was a multiplayer, eight people playing at once. And the, the first two and the last two had to take a shot. Mm-hmm. And you were really good, so you had a shot every time. And I <laughs> really sucked, so I also had a shot every time. Do you remember that night? Oh yeah, no, that was really that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. I'd do that again. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's that's what would get you into games: alcohol. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Maybe after you're breastfed. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not vodka shots. Yeah. No. <laughs> Wait till Lucas is a bit older. Yeah. Like I guess just taking a step back from that. When, when you when you heard like oh look. I'm going to go to this uh, this party, but it's, it's these boys playing bloody Super Smash Brothers and you're not into games. Why would you still rock up? I don't think I was given any context whatsoever. Yeah, okay, so that's why. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we'd had a few conversations by then and I knew it was at your house. I'm like, I want to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was more about you than it was the games. <laughs> oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet, everyone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used to do that a lot. Just, um, you know, Smash Brothers was our... Was our drinking game? Was that the last one that I went to? Uh, last party? Yeah. I can't that remember that you ever had of the drinking game. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't remember to be honest. I'm if that was my sad last. Sad that it end. Yeah, well, that, that lots of fun. Like um, Jacob and I, with a Smash Brothers brawl. What we'll do before we go out, and this this was when I was, I don't know, freshly eighteen or whatever. But I don't know if. Uh, young people still do this this was me as a tight ass when i went out i didn't want to like buy a beer or buy drinks so we just bought like a we bought a bottle of vodka and just did shots of that playing super smash brothers <laughs> and we're, you know we're nice and perky and ready to go out and uh you know only spend i don't know 20 bucks each on a <laughs> bottle of vodka and uh thinking back to it that, that's disgusting I can't touch vodka whatsoever anymore but it was, it was a lot of fun just like having an excuse to play up playing smash brothers before you go out yeah 
And as a non-gaming player, it sort of, you know, it focuses on something else. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, you're obviously not going to, like, there was enough people there that you didn't play every game either, so you could choose to tag in or tag out. But it just took the pressure off of it being so competitive because mm. it was just a bit more fun and relaxed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, look, I wasn't trying. You well, weren't trying, but you won every time. I can't, I can't say I wasn't trying. But <laughs> 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 um, I think um, what, I, what I meant to say is I didn't really want to win every time because I couldn't handle my drinks, <laughs> especially like, you know, straight vodka. It's not great. Was it always vodka? I feel like there was a pretty unhealthy mix of drinks. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Well, I, I had no taste whatsoever when it came to alcohol then. <laughs> it's probably like um, Carlton Draft and vodka. Yeah. No good. Pretty, Disgusting. Pretty stock standard. Yeah, no. Now it's like expensive spiced rum. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a few years, hopefully, I'm just having just straight on ice or something like that. Yeah. Mm. But I, I don't know. I don't. It's been a long time since I've been like – you know, socialized <laughs> and like, you know, I had like a fair few drinks. So that's obviously gone down the wayside since we're older and got a son now. Yeah. Um, so we can't just get the vodka out when, when like a, a video game comes out. So I don't know. I think this, this is a question that gets asked a lot on a lot of gaming podcasts that I listen to. And there's always someone writes on like, Hey, I just, what do you reckon I should get in, you know, get my girlfriend into? Like, you know, I just want to want to play some games with my girlfriend. Because I think there's this desire to like, you know, share stuff we're really passionate about with one another. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I dare say you have that, you know, you have that with like the gym and stuff. And you're like, Drew, come and work out with me. And uh, I'm I'm hard to, to get there. Yeah. Even though I do, <laughs> I do want to. <laughs> just my laziness kicks in. So I, I, I understand, I, I do understand the, the feeling on both sides. Mm. But like w- with you, I think a lot of your frustration when it comes to say Mario Kart and Smash Brothers is that you're just, you know, you're not going to lose against, <laughs> well, you're not going to win against me. No, absolutely not. So, and n- not, and if you do win, it's no, no offense to, to you, but it's not, it's not going to be like my full, yeah my full effort put into it. Mm. And you're going easy on me and it's not, yeah. Mm. yeah. And so those games are, you know, out of the question until a few more of those skills come up because do you find it's hard to sort of use like the sticks and all the buttons on it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Like my um, my skill set when it comes to, you know, Smash Bros is just to literally smash the controller with, all, with both thumbs just going crazy <laughs> with all the buttons. Just bat and mush? Yeah. There's, there's no bat and mush. Button mash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's no skill to it because it's just so stressful. Like you mm. say for you, it's um, winding down and switching off and, you know, relaxing and stuff like that. Whereas for me, it's, you know, there's a whole new step in the hand-eye coordination that I just didn't grow to have. Like, yeah, it's it's a whole nother step for me to to be able to get you know, and remember where X is and press it at the right time and, you know, what it does in each game and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's it's a lot. Yeah. And you even hear this from people who fell out of games like years ago when the controllers were a lot more simple, like only two buttons and a directional pad and maybe a couple of shoulder buttons and that's it. But now you've got like the two sticks, <laughs> also the directional pad, four buttons. You've got a couple of um, buttons on the top, a few paddles on the bottom it's like it is a lot to yeah, exactly. Chantel was just having an aneurysm just thinking about it, <laughs> yeah. and it like it is a lot to keep up with. And it's only because you know I I literally grew up with it. You know, playing PlayStation Two and GameCube, and then moving to the Wii. I guess you know that's completely different. I can't really <laughs> say that's the same <laughs> thing. But with the PlayStation cons- uh, consoles and even now Switch, you know, all the controls are very much the same. So we do have that sort of ability to be able to use it properly. So I think I think that's a, a lot of it, and just being able to control the game. Yeah. Because like that was the whole sort of selling point with the Wii is like people like you who don't aren't comfortable with two sticks and all that. It is just a controller, and you know how to swing a tennis racket. You know how to bowl a bowling ball. You know how to. You just got to remember to press A or B. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for the most part, that makes it a lot more accessible for people like you to get into it. Yeah, and definitely. That, and that's why the, the Wii took off. But so when you played stuff like Wii and maybe even DS with just a touchscreen, did, did you feel like, oh, look, this is easy to wrap my head around? Did you find yourself enjoying those types of games? Um, well, I, I don't think I still played a lot of games. It was more just, you know, brain training and shit mm. like that. Just, yeah, well, that, yeah. that. That's a game. That's a game. Mm. I mean, and, it, it's not like a, it's not a hardcore game. No, which and are, I learned Chinese and stuff that really like it tested my. I found that it tested m- not um, my hand-eye coordination, mm. but you know my my brain in other ways and stuff like that. So, yeah, as far as you know, pressing buttons and stuff, it was really basic and easy. But yeah, that was something else that I was focusing on. Mm. Yeah, because like it, not not all games have to be like you know like Super Smash Brothers like just action packed like you mm. got it like like <laughs> I think a lot of people struggle with that game who aren't that familiar with maybe fighting ca- games is that when you fall off the edge you're like what do I do? Yeah, <laughs> well that, that, that's a big thing for you. Like if you walk off the edge you're like all right I'm buggered, but it's like it's it's hard to keep track of like all right well like for me trying to explain it to you be like all right you, you have two jumps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you've got a final jump, which is your up B move, which you go up on the um, up on the stick, press B, and then that does like a move that gives you a third jump and allows yeah. you to get back. And that usually has like a lot bigger jump than than just your normal jump. And, and sometimes I'd nail that, but I'd also move my the joystick in the direction away from mm. the the thing as well. So it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's like a, a lot to it, and I think I think a lot of people take it for granted because like Smash Brothers is is a pretty is a pretty simple fighting game compared to a lot of these other, I guess more even more in depth fighting games where you've got like A A B B B B and like all these combinations just to pull off one move. But mm. like personally, for me, I I didn't grow up with um like playing that intense a fighting game. So if someone puts me in that, like all right, just you got to go. If you want to do a, a punch, it's down, down, B, B, one or whatever. <laughs> whatever combination it is, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's too much. And then, you, <laughs> and then you've got to like look at the I guess the spacing between the characters and when you utilise that move, the timing, everything. It's like that's too much for me, mm. for example. So, Oh, yeah. Like I did Taekwondo for almost 10 years. So mm-hmm. as far as combat and spatial awareness goes, in real life I'm actually – pretty good at that but of course yeah you know in terms of it on the screen and um, moving the the joystick across you don't know how um efficient you know all the graphics and stuff is like i'll move it across and it'll be like go completely off the screen (laughs) (laughs) Mm. so yeah that sort of thing yeah Mm. yeah and it's just like uh trying to i guess uh take that first step which is and it's it's hard to know what that is because whether it's like i think like a lot of other people would recommend all right so you don't want to play an action game maybe you just want a story and we have played like stuff like uh like the, the walking dead we did season one we did until dawn on playstation 4 yeah i really liked them mm. um it felt like a bit more of an interactive movie that we got to do together so yeah no, it was it was good. It was a good stepping stone. And the, the only thing with it though is that you didn't play it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you just but I still to... felt involved though. Yeah, because yeah. be like, oh, like, what what choice should we make? Yeah, should we kill him? Should we kill her? Like, yeah, yeah. So I was still involved in the play. I just didn't actually press the buttons, which I was very happy with. Mm. But there were like some like <laughs> I wanted to like give it to you so you could like, oh, yeah, like this is the X button, this is the circle button in the case with the PlayStation, like sort of work it out. But there were some circumstances where like a zombie's coming at you. And you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> you, just throw the con- <laughs> you throw the controller at me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I remember pl- when I first got my PlayStation 3, I was playing a game, I think it was Final Fantasy 13 2, and there's these bits in the game where you've got to press certain buttons at certain times and I would get I'll get the controller and just put it in front of my face. Like, oh, that's the circle button. Oh, that's the X button. Because I wasn't familiar with the PlayStation layout compared to the Nintendo layout. Yeah. That's where things were. 
And like, so I do get that. Like, oh shit. Oh, fucking. Where's, where's, yeah. It's like looking at the manual. Where's this button? How's this thing work? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, especially like if in, in, in our household, if I'm like, oh, let's play a PlayStation game, let's play an Xbox game, let's play a Nintendo game. All of the A, B, X, Y, circle, triangle, they're all in different places. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or like R1 or ZR or whatever. They've all called different things. And even in the case with Nintendo, um, like the back buttons are called ZR and ZL, whereas on PlayStation it's it's it's, it's different, and um, I'm a little bit more used to the trigger buttons just with the PlayStation terminology. So when it comes up on the Switch, I'm like, oh, which, 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 which one is this? <laughs> so yeah, so that that is something that gets recommended a lot. There's those those story narrative experiences where it's a bit more slow, you got a bit more time, but you do have agency over your decisions yeah. with the controller. But do you think? going forward, that would be a way to get used to a controller is playing a game like that? Or you're just like, you're not that interested. You would just rather watch it as a movie because it is pretty similar. It's, 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 it is similar to like movies and all that that you're already used to watching. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, like I'd be open to, to playing it a bit more like with the controller if it wasn't, there wasn't so much... Um, like I think it was Until Dawn that had a lot of quick reaction ones. Mm-hmm. Like you had a time limit and it was just like quite stressful and it was a horror. So there was oh, a, yeah. a lot of uh, sense of urgency and suspense and everything that, it, you know, as someone who didn't know where the buttons were, like it was really quite <laughs> unsettling. Yeah. Um. So maybe if it wasn't, you know, a horror and quick like timing and stuff like that, then, yeah, I'd probably – be a bit more open to to playing with the controller than just watching. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that because <laughs> the game especially. <laughs> like <laughs> like uh, I guess uh, spoilers for the main enemy, but like the Wendigos is like the main thing hunting people down. Yeah, that shit was fucked. Oh, God, that was scary when you see them. And um, Still have nightmares. They just like jump out at you and so like, oh, that, that character's gone. Okay, because I didn't press the button quick enough. I didn't move away or whatever. And there was, there was a certain uh, point in that game where you've got to hold the dual shock just still. Otherwise, if you move, they'll be to, they'll see you and get you. And that was so scary. It actually makes you like physically glue yourself to your seat. Yeah. So like you're just like bits like that. Like I don't want any bit. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. It was super effective, even just watching. Mm. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That, that 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 is what I feel is special about games, though. Because like if you're watching a movie, oh my god, you're getting into the action, or like oh this is scary, or and there's there's a lot of times in movies where, especially when I was a kid, like horror movies, I'm like in the toilet, like I'm a bit scared after watching that, but like with a game, it is very much it it puts you a lot more in their shoes. So if if they're scared and they've got to stay still, you've got to stay still, Mm. and you're glued to your seat. If they've got to make a decision, that's your decision that you're making. And that's impact on the story that follows, and you're not really just just uh, on the roller coaster like in a movie. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's that's why I feel is the the cool thing about about games in that respect. Um, and also something that I can't remember where I heard this, but this was something as well that really sort of made me understand someone who doesn't play games, because um, like we've we've Uncharted, so this is a PlayStation game as well, but Uncharted it's very much like a, a cinematic adventure game you're playing as Nathan Drake and you're doing like you'd like I guess you're doing platforming climbing cliffs shooting people before you get to a cutscene, more story and you're pretty much just r- rinsing and repeating that until you're just getting like the the movie clips and the story as your I guess reward for progressing through the game mm. and there's a bit where there's a big uh, train crash and it's hanging off a cliff you're at the bottom of the train you've got to climb up the carriages uh, to get to the top of the cliff, and for me, I'll look at the game and I'll be like, "All right, I, I can I can hold on to these glowing bits." Like the game is telling me that I can hold on to these white bits, and that is their way of saying "go there, go there," and you're just like going up. But um, someone who didn't play the game and hadn't isn't familiar with video games, but tried Uncharted Two, they're like, "All right, I'm going to go in the train. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to go here," and they don't. They don't have like, I guess, the design language of the game just ingrained in their head. Because mm. like for me, I, I know that I wouldn't be able to do like 
everything in that world. <laughs> I wouldn't be like, all right, I'm going to drill a hole in this cliff and then I'm going to go <laughs> like up there and just like skip the train altogether. Whereas someone in that, I guess, who isn't familiar with games that much might be like that. Do you feel like that might be some, something that you think where you're not like, oh, well, the game is designed for me to go this way, but you're like, I want to go a different way. And then you try that, for example. Um, I'm not too sure. Like I think in that way, like I would prefer you to just tell me exactly what I need to do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like, what, what about if I don't know? I'm like, oh, I don't know the answer, babe. Well, I mean, you remember when you were playing one of those games, I, I can't remember what it was called, but you couldn't get past it, so I Googled it. I can't remember. I remember, <laughs> I, I do remember you saying, um, I do remember this actually, like, I just want to get past it. Can you please Google it for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. All right. No, I can't remember at all. You know, I, I think I don't have the patience to try and figure out the game and the controller. Hmm. No, oh, that's yeah. I yeah. don't. I, I, I would not. <laughs> I'm making this really hard for you, Anna, because I'm just like, no, nah, this is an obstacle. That's an obstacle. That, well, there are so many obstacles. <laughs> that, that, that's why I'm happy to talk about it, like on the podcast, because I think a lot of people just see it as um, as something straightforward, being like, all right, so let's let's get you into games. This is a simple game. Play it, and then you'll be like, all right, I'm going to play a harder game and a harder game, and just progress like that. But I'm not, you've just been a hard nut, nut to crack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I'm trying to think where to where to start even. And it, it also comes like, you know, you need a, a game that actually like, go, oh, that catches your eye. Oh, that looks cool. I want to learn that as well. And stuff like, you know, Mario and Smash Brothers. And you know, you're not really like a cartoony person. So Nintendo is probably not the place to start, I would say for you, mm-hmm. even, even though their games are meant to be accessible and more open to people of all ages, whether it's families or kids or big man babies like myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's probably, it might not be the place to start. I feel like. What's that game where like, it was kind of like Cluedo and then you turn into ghosts or something. Cluedo, but you turn into ghosts. Yeah, where you go on the other side and it's a maze and oh, I just I can't remember. But I enjoyed watching that one, and I think it would have been a good one for me to play. Okay, I reckon I did play it briefly. Was this a Nintendo game? It reminds me of um something from Nintendo Land. I I, I know this saying saying this to you makes no sense, but there, there was there was a mini game in that where uh. I think, um, you know, you can run around as ghosts on the TV and then someone is playing as Luigi on the gamepad. They go around. Uh, no, it wasn't that. Um, I think you came across it because the kind of funny guys were playing it or something. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't remember. Oh. <laughs> mm. Have to track it down though. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, because like, I think like typically... And just from what we've been saying, I've I have lent more sort of lent more into the PlayStation side of things when it is like introducing you to stuff because that is like the more I guess uh, more realistic sort of take on I guess games with like Uncharted and Until Dawn and like you know stuff like that where I'm like all right you're probably more into just like a, a good story you mm-hmm. like movies you like all that type of stuff so just a cinematic experience just to watch like The Last of Us Part Two we pretty much played all of that together. Yeah. Even though you um, had no context for the first game, <laughs> I sort of sat there and be like, "All right, so this is what happened." Joel and Ellie, you know, <laughs> yeah, went off on their, their adventure, and I think you enjoyed watching that for I the did. most part. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it, and it still is a lot more memorable than just watching a movie. I don't know if it's because it's longer and it's sort of like um, a bit more interactive and stuff like that, and you sort of even just watching it, but you're a part of making the decisions in you know, the character arcs and stuff like that. And just, yeah, like it is a lot more memorable than just watching a movie or a show Mm. or something like that. Yeah, I'd also say for you though, it's probably also because we haven't played that many games together really. Mm. Where, you know, you've watched a fair few movies and TV shows and they all sort of blur together. Whereas like as far as games go, you remember Until Dawn, 
Last of Us Part Two. Uh, that's probably it, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so that, so the, 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 I guess that's probably why. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. So let's start wrapping this up. I wouldn't mind setting us a little task and maybe coming back later, see how we go, you know, getting maybe used to a controller or finding a game that you're like, oh, look, I'd like to play that. That looks like fun or yep. whatever. So where should we start? Should we start somewhere trying to get you familiar with a, a controller or um, just uh, another story game to enjoy together? Because there's, there's a fair few on PlayStation I've even, I haven't finished as well. So there's plenty of stuff on there. Yeah, I don't know. Or would you like to get into like something like a more traditional game, like a gamey game, which is actually like you know trying to beat a high score or whatever? Mm, I don't know. What's that game on um your phone you're playing where you got to like throw the ball or something? I remember you playing that all the time. I'm like, what is this? Throw the ball. Angry Birds? <laughs> no, it wasn't Angry Birds. Um, I don't know. Oh, Bubble Shooter? Yeah, was it Bubble Shooter? Yeah, I played that on the computer. Was it the computer, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like always playing this uh, bubble shooter game. And there I am being like, hey, do you want to play some Tetris or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tetris is good, but it gets faster and it's, yeah, mm. too much. Well, if it, the thing is, if it, if it didn't get faster, you would be there forever. Yeah. It'd be boring. You'd be like, all right, just end. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> hurry up and end. There's a, there's a game on Switch called Tetris 99 where you're versing uh, like uh, I guess 98 other people and you're trying to knock each other out by yeah, sending like you. Yeah, I've watched you. Yeah, yeah, that is in like the first month it was out, it wasn't too bad. But if you play it now, people are insane. I can. Can't keep up. No, nah, I cannot keep up. Welcome Pe- to my life. Yeah, so <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is how Chantel feels. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it feels to be useless at something no oh i know how it feels to be useless at something trust me <laughs> well the thing is I, i'm like i'm not like i'm not that good at games like, you're not going to see me at some um big tournament you're not going to see me at <laughs> any of this but i enjoy it it's fun yeah yeah and uh, i don't i don't want to force i don't want to force this onto you even though probably yeah, probably are yeah. You're on, you're on this podcast. You're like, oh, oh I've got to play a game there, but I don't know. I think it'll be. I think it would be fun if you if you can get over that first that first hurdle. The rest mm. will come sort of a lot easier. Maybe here's a thought: instead of focusing on which games, maybe mm-hmm. focus on when. So mm. maybe not choosing the time where it makes sense to be winding down, but to be focusing on it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because we haven't really tried that. It's more of a nighttime thing, you know, mm-hmm. even before Lucas. Well, this is when we had time, I guess. But Yeah. But, yeah, maybe if we sort of sit down during the day on a weekend or, or something, get a babysitter. Mm. <laughs> so I'm, I can actually focus on it and learn it properly and, and stuff like that That's instead of, you know, like, oh, I'm so tired, my brain's not functioning, you know, like I just want to go to bed. Mm. But, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like if you said to me, like, learn this new thing, I'm like, fucking nine o'clock, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I yeah, 100% get that. So that that's, that's a good one. Um, also, with, like, would older games, like, say, like, older Mario games or older where it is very much just, like, left, right, up, down, would that be any help or was that just – does that just look old to you when you're like, ah, oh, look, I, that looks like shit, I don't want to play that? Oh. <laughs> uh. I mean, it probably wouldn't inspire me, but it might be a good place to start. Mm. Yeah, because you're just like, oh, well, you know, used to the timing of jumping over something. Because, mm. like, the, the very first Mario game, it's very, like, the, the first level is just infamous just for how it teaches you without actually saying anything, where, it, like, it starts you off, you've got a fl- flat ground, you've got, a, um, you've got a question mark where you're like, what does that do, that question mark, when you've got this enemy coming towards you, which is called a Goomba, and you're like, it just automatically it says there's something up there, there's this thing here, and if you run into it, you die. You're like, okay. Yeah. Well, how do, how do I work around that? Then you press one of the only buttons on the controller, it makes you jump. You're like, huh, you can jump over it. Then you hit the question block, something comes out of it. It makes you stronger. Oh, okay. And then like it's very from that very first sequence of that level, you know, you've learned pretty much what you need to do in that game. Jump mm-hmm. over things, hit these things, makes you stronger. 
like it's just all taught to you straight away. Yeah. Which is, you know, something these days is like if you pick up a game, there's so much to learn straight off the bat. Um, like whether it's like a, a shooting game. So, all right, so you've got aim down sights. These, these are your, your your weapons. If you want to change your gun, you hit this button. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to like, if you want to reload this, this button, if you want to do a slide, if you want to run, like there's just way more to it. Mm-hmm. Where like if I'm playing a genre of video game that I'm not that familiar with, it might be like a real-time strategy game or something. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't grow up with um with them. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like a, an interest of mine necessarily. So when I get to those tutorials, I'm, I'm like, all right, I've got a lot more learning to do than if I'm jumping into something I'm familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, all right, let's, uh, let's try that. So a good time to sort of focus and um, get into it. Uh, pick a, a game that's a bit more simple. We might try with some, I guess, Super Nintendo games from the, I guess, the early 90s bit more basic, yeah. just the premise of a D-pad and a couple of buttons. And we'll see where, where we go from there and we might do a encore a little bit later once we've done that and see how you go. A, a bit of a check-in. Yeah, we'll do a check-in with Chantel. Yeah, and we'll also check in on how Drew's gym's going. Yeah, okay. We'll, <laughs> yeah. We can do that. Well, the, the thing is I, actually, I I do want to do it. Yeah. And I, I know I need to, uh, especially if I'm not doing soccer. Well, Lucas oh, is Lucas is up. All Lucas right, is see up. you guys. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, Chantel, thank you very much for joining me. I, I appreciate it. She's off. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I think that was that was a lot of fun. I really did uh, appreciate having uh, having Chantel on. She's had the runoff and tend to our son who's woken up. Hopefully, it wasn't my fault. I don't think it was. What is the time? Nine thirty. All right. But yeah, I think it was just interesting to get a sort of a different take on on vi- on sort of video games and have someone who isn't like a, a hardcore gamer. I think uh, we're, we're all in our little bubbles, whether it's listening to podcasts or talking to mates, and people have like a lot of you know pe- people absolutely love this stuff. A lot of people I talk to, whether it's online or with Bryce, and I don't know, it's just uh, it's interesting to get that different perspective. So. I think we will do some check-ins. Hopefully, we do get Chantel to try some games. And I don't know, like in a few years especially when, when Lucas is a bit older and I think I think it would be likely that he'll be into games, even if it's just a little bit. I think just the, the household he's going to grow up in with that many consoles and games around the place and even if it's just like a simple iPad game, it'll be useful for Chantel to, I guess, uh, learn, I guess, even just a little bit to understand what you know, what content he should or should not be playing at the very least. So it'd be fun. So yeah, look forward to doing that check in. And uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of the show, guys. I hope you enjoyed this a little bit of a different episode, a little bit of a, a ramble from me, and also uh, talking to Chantel. It's good fun having my wife on. I love her very much. I don't know if you guys can pick up Lucas crying. Jesus. Oh, well, I think it's time to, <laughs> it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening to episode 221 of the House of Mario. And until next time, guys, the doors to this episode are closed. I'll catch you later. The House of Mario, a Nintendo podcast, is lovingly crafted and recorded in the southeast of South Australia. The show is produced and hosted by me, Drew Agnew, and my co-host is Bryce DeWitt. If you enjoy my work here and on my other podcasts, Encore at the House of Mario, A Drew Story, and Crackin' Furfies, help spread the word by sharing us with a mate or leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you would like to show further support and help me achieve my goal of freeing up one working day a week to spend more time refining and creating podcasts, please consider checking out patreon.com slash idruby where for only $1 you get access to my secret recordings where I share everything behind the scenes. A big thank you to the legend DJ for supporting the content at the podcast producer level on Patreon. From the bottom of my heart, thank you.